please make your way to the parking lot. No, sorry. Right, it's that time of the evening when there has to be there has to be a couple of speakers. Um, I'm not following the tradition, but I'm going to speak first. So. used to do when we were in the playground and he said put your hands up at the back if you can't hear me of course if he couldn't hear you he didn't know what to whether you could need to put your hand up that was ben ben bowman our friends over here on the right remember him very well anyway can you hear me now yeah. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I went to the barber on tuesday and when I went, I went to the barber and I said, I'm dying for a pee. Do you have a toilet? And he said, do you want a number one or a number two? I said, well, I'm a pee, I'll have a number one. And that's what ended up with my haircut. <laughs> anyway, can I just say how wonderful it is to see you all here tonight. It, it really fills me with great pleasure and my heart is beating because there's so many good friends from school, from Sheffield, from work, running, cousins, family, uh, Tina weekend, <laughs> relatives, golf people, it's, it's actually brilliant that you've all made the effort. And I must say, there's one or two that need a special mention. First of all, Phil and Sue, coming all the way from Canada. Yeah. It was touch and go. Yeah. In fact, he, had, he had a hotel booked about, I don't know, nine months ago. <laughs> so he was desperate to come. And also, Charlie and Trish, who have just come back from Italy. So thank you very much. And also, my lovely family. Martin, Christina, Philip, and little Leia. They only decided last weekend to make the effort and go through all the hassle. So thank you very much. Thank you. And it is a great shame because our friends from Hong Kong, Tim and Betty, um, my nephew, Adam, Kira, and his two children, and uh, Stephen Marianne from America, F Rolf and Doris from Germany, and Dominic and Martin from France. Unfortunately, due to COVID, couldn't come. So, thank you very much. Right, now, I've had a very interesting life over my 70 years. And I've had some wonderful experiences and, and adventures. And the first, the first major adventure was when I got into running. And I did a, a run from John O'Groats to Land's End on a relay with one of my very good friends, Mr. David Jameson, over there. Thank you, Dave. And then as a result of that, I got into running marathons. And my first marathon was the New York Marathon. There's a picture of me over there running the New York Marathon. And before the New York Marathon, uh, we had a breakfast um, celebration at the Inn on the Green. And the guest of honour that day for the whole marathon was the fantastic um, long distance runner from the Czech Republic called Emil Zartopek. <laughs> he, what a lovely guy. He was, there, was, there was about 5,000 people there and there was a spare seat on our table. And he came up and he said, do you mind if I sit down and have breakfast with you? And we had 20 minutes, 25 minutes talking to him. An absolutely fantastic guy. And very sad because unlike someone who maybe has won a 10,000 metres and a 5,000 metres, like uh, Mo Farah, who suddenly becomes instant fame and, and fortune, poor old Emil went back to the Czech Republic and uh, fell out of favour with the communists and um, had to leave his family and work in a mine for five years away. Can you imagine someone like that who won the 5,000 metres, the 10,000 metres and then the marathon, all on the, the same 
within a few days. So he was one of the great guys I've met, and um, strange that I should now be married to a lovely Czech woman. And um, he signed my shirt. There's a picture there of my signing my T-shirt. Anyway, that was the first guy. <clears throat> the second adventure uh, was really when I started going to China, and um, I had some amazing times and some very funny, interesting times that I could spend hours giving you. I'm sure some of you have heard them before. Some of the stories about China and what happens and. I was in a city of six million people and there was only four expatriates, so we, whatever we did with a big nose and wide eyes, we, we stuck out like a sore thumb. Anyway, um, as a result of that, I, I, um, I met many interesting people and did various things. I took Leeds United to uh, and organised their trip to China. Um, but one of the biggest things was meeting President Clinton. Um, there was a, a Chinese delegation and a mayor of Hangzhou was across and he was speaking at the Yorkshire International Business Convention and he gave an hour speech and what an orator. So you know, he spoke for an hour without notes, without auto cue, just not, not like the um, ah, uh, uh, of our present leader. He was absolutely fantastic. And it was great to meet with him, and I, I spoke with him for about five and ten minutes. Great guy. And as you know, he was a, a great musician as well. He played the, uh, the saxophone. But he also had another great skill. He was very handy, and he, he used to fiddle around on the harmonica. <laughs> you didn't get that, did you? Uh, anyway, that, that, that felt flat, didn't it? That's what she said. And then the final, the final thing is, my final adventure was cycling across Europe. When I was with my good friend, unfortunately he died a couple of years ago, Frank, um, in, in, uh, in China, and the Berlin Wall was just falling, and I said, Frank, before Eastern Europe changes, we ought to cycle across Europe and see Eastern Europe before it changes. And we did. The following year, in 1990, we cycled from Berlin to Budapest in 10 days, taking all our gear with us. Uh, that was with Steve in America and uh, Jim from Hong Kong. And we had two days R&R &R in Prague. Wow. The third and most fantastic person I've ever met is my beautiful wife. <laughs> she, has, she has given me so much happiness and joy and I had instantly two beautiful children, Martin and Petra. And not only that, but now, gosh, I'm going to well up now. I've got four fantastic grandchildren. Polly, Emmy, Philip, and little Leia, darling. <laughs> so, I'd just like to say, thank you, darling. You've been absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. You're my real light and I love you. Thank you. So thank you very much. But today isn't just about me. You might think so. I've spent so much time on the stage. But 50 years ago today, by coincidence, my brother and his lovely wife, Andrea, got married in Manchester. So today, is their golden wedding anniversary. And there is, you've probably seen some pictures from here uh, of, of that event. And there's a very long haired youth whose parents said, You've got to get your hair cut, Andrew. And I did, and 
had about half an inch cut off. <laughs> anyway, let's raise our glasses to Mike and Andrea and their wonderful family. 50 wonderful years of marriage. Happy golden anniversary, Mike and Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. multi-talented as my bloody brother. He's scooped the pool, hasn't he? Musician, cook, craftsman. He's too bloody damn clever, isn't he? Oh, I've been warned, I've got to watch my language, so sorry. Um, so seriously, where do we begin? Well, I think um, we're all uh, aware that Andy uh, likes to make his mark in the world and that was never more obvious than uh, at the time of his birth. Not to wait for the uh, delivery room at Rochford Hospital in Essex, oh no, 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 no. In the ambulance, Andy arrived. <laughs> Born in the ambulance, so that set the tone. And after that, he began to make his way in the world. And he was doing pretty well at school. And then he fell in with a very bad lot. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Terry Neville. Oh, Terry, what did you do? Oh, uh, I've got some other names here. Terry Neville, Brian Kelly, Ernie Morell, Clive Bolton. But despite all their best efforts, he succeeded in getting eventually a degree and he qualified as a chartered surveyor and carried on making his way. Now he travelled widely and fetched up one day in Hong Kong and he asked if there was a job there as a surveyor. Now there he was dressed in his a rough old shorts and his t-shirt he went into the government land office and said is there a chance of a job here and they looked at him and said you'll have to have a, in, an interview and he said fair enough and he was interviewed in his shorts and his scraggly old t-shirt and he got the job and Andy then became as he's mentioned uh, before a bit of a China hand and one breakfast time Many years later, we were listening to the Today programme and uh, John Humphreys was talking about an incident that had taken place in uh, Beijing. And lo and behold, Andy Fitz came on the radio and he was being interviewed about what he had seen in Tiananmen Square. And so he made his mark as an old China hand. But that wasn't the end of it because Later on, as he's already uh, mentioned, he cycled across Europe into the former Eastern Europe and there he met somebody who enchanted him. And I need to say no more, he's said it all, the rest is history and it's been a wonderful story. We're only at point, we're only at point seven. <laughs> Danielle's children came to England, uh, and I'm sure they'll forgive me for saying this, with precious little English, but uh, Andy's careful tutoring ensured that they sailed through school and then both obtained degrees from British universities. And I think that's a huge testament to the work that Andy and Danielle put in to ensuring that they had successful times in the UK. So well done you two, it was fantastic achievement. 
So then in Yorkshire, in Sheffield and Leeds, uh, Andy carved out successful careers. And then upon retirement, they moved down to Suffolk. And uh, it's been a great move because now I can see much more of my brother and Danielle and the children. And um, it's been superb to see you much more often than we did when you were in Yorkshire. Um, Andy and I have had some rewarding times following Essex County Cricket Club, often at Lord's winning uh, one day finals. Sometimes, but not very often, we've cheered when Southend United have won something. <laughs> but I'm afraid these days it's a very sad story and we'll pass quickly on. Uh, he, uh, Andy's already mentioned the uh, significance of the 25th of September and um, I'm going to pay my own tribute. <laughs> to my lovely wife, Andrea. <laughs> 50 years and um, it don't seem a day too long. <laughs> um, so thank you very much. It's been a huge pleasure. And honour. Thank you. So, Andrew Peter Fitzgerald, I'm proud to call you my brother, as I'm sure people here are proud to count you amongst their friends and relatives. Yours has been a life very full lived, and long may it continue. So, everyone, you join with me in raising your glasses and saying, cheers Andy, happy birthday, it's uh, a few weeks ago now,